Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, we will learn all about the new prompt columns that bring Gen AI capabilities in tables wherein the data for the column is generated by a custom prompt. You have full flexibility to customize this prompt, connect it to your data, and see the magic of Gen AI in action. So let's begin. The new prompt columns bring generative AI capabilities directly into Dataverse tables with columns whose values are generated by an AI prompt. The moment you pick the data type as prompt, we get the option to add a new prompt. Let's take an end-to-end -end scenario. I have built an app called Customer Feedback Portal that showcases data from two Dataverse tables. One that has a list of all the products that my organization offers, product name, product price. And then I have a feedback table that stores information about feedback related to a product. The customer name and email who provided the feedback, the date of the feedback, and the actual feedback that they have provided for that specific product. For users to enter the product feedback, I have a simple Microsoft form where they can enter their name, email address, pick a product that my org offers, and provide their feedback. For my feedbacks table, I will create multiple prompt columns. Let's create our first column. I'll give the name customer sentiment. Here, we can also provide emojis. I'll add the sparkling emoji for my prompt columns. It will give a good visual indicator to my end user. The data type will pick prompt. Prompt columns currently only generate text output. Next, I'll click on add a new prompt. And this will open the AI prompt dialog where I can provide my instructions to the AI model of my choice. From basic models to standard to premium. Plus, you can also bring in your own custom models from Azure AI Foundry. The name of the prompt, I'll call it Feedback Customer Sentiment. Instructions. You can give instructions in natural language, Gen AI, to the model that you select so the model can provide the response. And that response will directly be stored in that column. While providing the instructions, you can also give knowledge. That knowledge will come from the same table in which you are creating the prompt column. In this case, my feedback table. It will list out the columns that I can select and provide as a reference to my instruction. Additionally, it will also show all the related columns. Feedback is related with the product table. I can even pick columns from my related table and provide that as a context to my instruction. One feature that I love most about AI prompts is you do not have to be an expert at providing perfect prompts. Let me explain. The existing prompt that's provided, I'll just simply select and delete. When the instructions are empty, right at the bottom, we can use Copilot to describe what we want our prompt to do, and Copilot will generate the instructions for us. In this case, I would like to classify the sentiment based on the feedback provided as positive, negative, or neutral. I'll submit and Copilot will start drafting the prompt for me, which I can ask it to regenerate. I can keep the instructions, delete the instructions. It's our choice. I'll say keep it. 
you are tasked with classifying the sentiment of feedback provided as positive, negative, or neutral. Your goal is to analyze the text and determine the overall sentiment conveyed. Provide the feedback text here. Here, I'll put a slash, pick my knowledge, which is my feedback table, and go and pick the customer feedback column that has the data of the feedback that the customer has entered. I'll click close. I can go ahead and test the model right here. So it will provide the response. Notice the response is sentiment classification is positive and it also gives the rationale behind why it detected it to be positive. This one is picking one of the feedbacks in my table. The pan is easy to clean and works well. If I go to knowledge used, this is all the data in my table. It'll pick the first row for performing the test. In my case, the output format, I simply wanted to provide the sentiment. I'll say only show the sentiment detected, test, and now it only shows the sentiment. That's the model response. You need to test this and validate this because the final model response is what will be saved in this prompt column. And that will happen whenever data is added or modified for that row. The prompt is ready. Let's go ahead and save this. This will go ahead, save the AI prompt and connect it to my column called customer sentiment. I'll save. Done. My prompt column is ready. Let's go ahead and fill out a product feedback. I've provided my feedback. I'll submit. I have an automation that runs when a new form response is submitted and routes that response into my Dataverse table. Right here is my new feedback. In this view, let me go ahead and add my customer sentiment column. Apply. Here is the customer sentiment prompt column that has the value positive as it has detected positive feedback. Generative AI in a column in Dataverse tables. For my existing feedback, let's take this one as an example. As soon as a modification is made to that record, the prompt column will perform the update. I have all my customer sentiment set. I can sort, filter, and take any other action that I normally do on a column in Dataverse. In fact, all of the in-app agentic experiences work on prompt columns as well. I'm asking the data exploration agent to list all the customer feedback that's negative. It's gone ahead, interpreted my natural language input and applies the filter. Same applies for the other in-app agents. Let's take visualization as an example. Here, on the x-axis, let's put the customer sentiment. There are 75 positive customer sentiments, two neutral, three negative. And if I select on any of these visuals, the respective filter will be applied in the view. How about another prompt column to categorize the type of feedback that is being provided? Back to my table, I'll go and create another prompt column called feedback category. Once again, prompt, and let's create another AI prompt. I will say classify the, I'll put a slash, and provide the customer feedback column as knowledge for this specific prompt. 
So classify the feedback into one of these categories, which is bug, feature request, complement, or other. Let's test this out. The model gets called. It's detected that it's a complement. Based on the knowledge, it's picking the first item here, which is the pan is easy to clean and works well. If I want to test the model response based on other feedbacks that have been provided, let's take this one. The keyboard is great for typing, but a bit noisy. The ID column has this value. So I'll select this and I can filter. Filter on the ID 1014. Now, if I test it, the model will provide the response only for that specific knowledge that I provided, which is 1014. The categories I had was bug, feature request, complement, or other. I've added another category for classification. I'm testing it. Notice the model says that this specific knowledge that it is using at this moment for testing, this is being categorized as complaint. Once you're done with your testing, make sure you remove the filter and then save. That will go and save the prompt. And I will save my column. Here is the feedback category that the prompt column has generated for me. The pan is easy to clean and works well. That's a compliment. You can see how easily the prompt column has categorized my feedback. Let's add two more prompt columns. One for suggested actions. Based on, let's give it some knowledge. The customer feedback, the customer sentiment, the customer category. Based on all of this information, suggest next best actions to take. My products have a price associated with it. Now, let's say if the price of the product is less than or equal to $100, and the feedback is negative, then I'm okay to provide a refund. Let's add that in the instruction. If, let's give it the knowledge. The feedback and the product table are related. So I'll pick my related table and I'll pick the price. So if the price is less than or equal to $100, then suggest, to offer a refund to the customer. Now, if the price is less than 100 and feedback is negative, then suggest to offer a refund to the customer. Once again, I can test the model. Now it's providing a good detailed set of actions. Let's update the instructions. Let's test. I've asked it to simply provide the top three actions to take. Here you can see based on the knowledge that it has used, because the feedback was negative about the blender, it's asking to offer a refund as the price is less than hundred dollars. I'll save this call. One other column that I will add is suggested email response. Type prompt based on the customer feedback, frame an email response to the customer. There we go. It's gone ahead and framed a response. Here I can also include my logic for the refund. Let's test. This will go and frame the email. You can do a lot more. Let me show you an example. Here, I have pasted few details. I have gone ahead and provided common problems that customers face and also provided their responses. Q&A style. These are the actual products in my product table. So it checks this Q&A 
and if it matches the feedback that the customer has shared, then provide a suggested solution to their problem. 4K monitor, if there is an issue with overheating, then the solution it should suggest in the email is ensure proper ventilation and avoid using the device on soft surfaces. I'll save this prompt, save this column. Here I have a negative sentiment for a blender that is not working. This blender costs less than a hundred dollars. Let's explore. Sentiment negative category is a bug. Suggested actions. Top three, offer a refund, provide a replacement, follow up with the customer. And here is the suggested email. So Sam is providing feedback about 4K monitor. The 4K monitor is overheating. Submits the feedback. The one that Sam submitted, where the sentiment was negative, and he mentioned the monitor is overheating, Let's explore the suggested email response on this one. It is also providing a solution based on the instructions I provided to the prompt. This is the power of prompt columns. This entire solution I was able to build in 30 minutes thanks to the power of AI. I used Plan Designer where I working with multiple agents was able to build the data model, the app and sample data. I simply provided my business problem to plan designer. Customer feedback tracker for products. I need that. It created the user requirements. It framed the data model. I was able to create my model driven app. All of this in a solution. And in the feedback table, we were able to build our prompt columns. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.